If you are thinking of upgrading to a veranda stateroom on your next Viking River cruise, this video is for you. We just returned from an eight-day Sand River cruise on Viking Radgrid and share all the details with you about our stateroom to see if this stateroom category is right for your next trip up next. Welcome aboard cruisers, I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise where we help you see the world one port at a time. Whether you're new to cruising or just new to river cruising, we're here to help ensure your next trip is smooth sailing. Unlike ocean cruise ships, river cruise ships have fewer stateroom category options. On Viking Radrid, there was only 84 total staterooms, which include 22 standard staterooms, 18 French balconies, 35 veranda rooms, and nine suites. Of course, sales and promotions are constantly changing. However, to upgrade from a standard stateroom to a veranda stateroom for our particular itinerary was anywhere between $1,000 to $1,500 per person. And since we put our Viking River Cruise review out, we've received a lot of questions about whether we think it's worth it to upgrade to a veranda stateroom. For our seven night trip, we were assigned cabin 219. This veranda B stateroom is located on the starboard side of the middle deck or deck two. River cruise ships are small, so it's never really a far walk anywhere in the ship. However, upgrading to a veranda stateroom does put you closer to some of the public areas. The restaurant was on our deck and the lounge and Aquavit Terrace were one deck above us. The same could be said about the French balcony cabins that were also on deck two. If you are thinking of upgrading from a standard cabin to a veranda stateroom, keep in mind that standard cabins are on the main deck. You will need to walk up and down at least one flight of stairs and usually two or potentially three flights of stairs to get to the other public areas as well as exit the ship. Our veranda stateroom was 205 square feet and included a personal balcony. Immediately upon entering the room, the bathroom was to the right and the closet was to the left. Continuing past the bathroom and closet, the long dresser and vanity area was to the left and the bed was to the right. The bed in our Viking veranda stateroom was on the aft wall facing forward. Between the bed and the balcony, there was a small shelf-like desk which doubled as a nightstand along with an upright chair. The television was on that wall opposite from the bed above the dresser, and there was a small nightstand on the other side of the bed as well. Finally, there is the balcony, which of course felt small when compared to balconies on ocean ships. The balcony was fairly long, about the length of the entire room, and narrow with just enough room for the two upright chairs and a small table. Overall, the cabin was a bit cozier than we expected, but we were glad to have a full balcony. The finishes and decor of the cabin were very on brand for Viking. They looked very similar to the cabins we stayed in during our Viking Ocean and Viking Expedition cruises in the past, except smaller. Now when comparing this cabin type to standard cabins, standard cabins are about 150 square feet. The layout is about the same, with the bathroom and the closets being roughly the same size. So where you lose space is in the interior. In particular, you'll lose space dedicated to the balcony, as well as that additional space that has the upright chair and console area. You'll still have many of the dresser drawers, and you'll still have a separate seating area across from the bed. But again, that area will just not be as long as it is in a veranda stateroom. When comparing verandas to French balconies, French balcony staterooms are actually even smaller than the standard rooms at only 135 square feet. However, when comparing all these stateroom categories, the bathrooms themselves are pretty comparable. Even so, the bathroom in our Viking Veranda stateroom was a little small even by cruise ship bathroom standards. Yet, it still featured all the necessities and even some upgrades like heated tile floors. Opening the bathroom door, the stand-up shower was to our left, and the toilet immediately in the front, and the sink slash vanity area to the right. There were a few shelves for storage and adequate counter space. The shower had a rectangular setup with a glass door. If you're looking for an upgraded bathroom, unfortunately, you're going to need to book one of the nine suites on board the ship. These staterooms feature a separate, complete stand-up shower, as well as a full vanity in the bathroom. Across from the bathroom are the closets. The closet size seemed on par with other cruise lines. 
One side featured a full-length clothes bar with hangers. The other side featured shelves along with the safe. The dresser portion housed the mini fridge and six additional drawers for storage. The vanity area had a small stool and plenty of counter space. Even though there was no shelving here, the area was plenty big for getting ready and storing many of our toiletries. The counter space above the drawers is where you'll find the glass bottles of provided water, the ice bucket, and the quiet Vox device charging station. You'll also find one US and one European power outlet near the vanity, and two USB outlets and one additional power outlet above the dresser portion. In terms of the seating area, it was basically just one upright chair and a larger nightstand slash desk. This became our charging station for laptops and cameras during the cruise. There's one US, one European, and two USB outlets near each nightstand as well. The queen size Viking Explorer bed provided adequate comfort during our trip. We had no issues falling asleep after long days ashore, exploring new and exciting ports of call. Lastly, there is the balcony, which always provided a great spot for taking in the scenery. Given that the weather during our trip was rather cool and rainy, we unfortunately did not get to use the balcony much, though it was nice to watch some of the scenic sailing. It's important to note that river cruises are known for tying up next to each other while in port, so you might not always have a view while docked, even if you have a balcony. Across the fleet, all Viking staterooms come with a number of included amenities. Free Wi-Fi. Television with live TV channels, complimentary movies, and in-house programming. Several USB ports and 110 and 220 volt outlets. Premium bath products. Telephone, safe, and mini fridge. Individual climate control. Bottled water replenished daily. Twice daily housekeeping. Underbed suitcase storage area. And wardrobe with wooden hangers. Our Viking River Cruise Veranda Stateroom offered all the amenities you would expect to find in a standard cruise ship cabin. However, when compared to Viking Ocean and Expedition ships, the staterooms are smaller. To be fair, we've never sailed on any other river ships for comparative purposes. We did make the accommodations work for our week-long cruise, but it would have been nice to have a bit more space in the closet and bathroom. It was also a tight squeeze to walk between the foot of the bed and the drawer. But for our seven night Seine River cruise, was it worth $1,000 to $1,500 more per person? With that upgrade, you're essentially getting a bigger room and a private balcony. Given there is so much going on, we didn't spend much downtime in our stateroom. There were a few mornings or afternoons before a tour or after a tour that we did some work or some social media. And we liked having the extra space to spread out and do that work and use our laptops. But if you don't care about that, or you're not going to be doing any work, there are public areas such as the lounge or the library that you could utilize if you're in a standard room. Plus, there's also the open sun deck. So if you don't have a balcony, you of course can go up to the sun deck and enjoy all the views during scenic cruising with a variety of different seating options. Making the decision to upgrade to a veranda stateroom on a Viking River cruise is really based on your preferences as well as your budget. For many, a standard stateroom will offer enough space and amenities, and the money you save can go towards some bucket list shore excursions, perhaps a trip to Versailles, or a visit to the Louvre. For other travelers, it's worth the upgrade to be able to wake up and walk right out to your balcony to admire the views of the riverbank, or to have the extra space if you wanna unwind and relax in your stateroom and feel more comfortable. Honestly, since we're used to balcony staterooms on ocean cruise ships, when we take our next river cruise, odds are we'll upgrade to a veranda stateroom unless the price difference is exorbitant. Now that you know what cabin type you should book on your Viking River cruise, we're bet you're ready to put down a deposit. But before you do, you need to check out our complete Viking River Cruise video review right here on YouTube. In that video, we go in depth into what it's really like on board a Viking longship. We talk about all the onboard amenities, dining, as well as the ashore programming. That way you're one step ahead of everyone else on board and your Viking River cruise will be smooth sailing.